Hello, and welcome to the Thai Center video series on including students with significant cognitive disabilities in school-wide positive behavioral interventions and supports, also known as PBIS. I'm Dr. Patricia McDade from the Thai Center. And I'm Dr. Lindsay Iono Conradi from the University of Hawaii. We hope you enjoy this series of videos on the why and how of including all students in the three tiers of PBIS. The image on this slide depicts a group of students with and without disabilities together in a school hallway smiling at the camera. The participant outcome for session one of this series is to increase your understanding of the importance of including students with significant cognitive disabilities in all three tiers of school-wide positive behavioral interventions and supports. The quotation on the screen reads, as a matter of best practice, we strongly encourage schools to consider how the implementation of behavioral supports within the IEP could be facilitated through a school-wide multi-tiered behavioral framework. In 2016, the US Department of Education stated that many students were not receiving appropriate behavioral interventions. They reminded education systems that students cannot be placed in secluded settings based solely on their behavior when other supports would be effective, and they encourage schools to consider implementing behavioral supports within the context of PBIS. The number of schools using PBIS has increased significantly in the past 20 years. The graph on the screen shows the number of schools using PBIS from the year 2000, when it was only a few hundred schools, to over 25,000 schools in the year 2018. PBIS is an example of a multi-tiered system of support. This multi-tiered system is illustrated with a triangle. Universal tier one supports are the base of the triangle and are provided to all students. Targeted tier two supports are in the center of the triangle and are provided only to some students. Intensive or tier three supports are at the top of the triangle and are provided to only those students who need that level of intensive support. When tier one and tier two supports are delivered with fidelity, this can help decrease the number of students who need intensive tier three support. If you're familiar with the school-wide PBIS framework, then you know that it is intended to be an inclusive framework to provide a continuum of supports that address the needs of all students. However, when we consider students with significant cognitive disabilities, the triangle ends up looking like this graphic, where tier three, intensive, is separated from the overall PBIS framework, which is illustrated on the slide by tier three, intensive, or the tip of the PBIS triangle being removed from the rest of the triangle, tier one, universal, and tier two, targeted. This is guided by these misconceptions. Students with significant cognitive disabilities are automatically labeled as tier three without access to lower tiers of support. This may indicate that teams are assuming that students cannot benefit from universal behavior supports or that those universal supports have not been made accessible. Students with significant cognitive disabilities who engage in challenging behaviors are assumed to require extensive support only which may lead to the exclusion from general education classrooms, and the misconception that these supports can only be delivered in separate placements by special education teachers and staff. In other words, they are not given the benefit of the whole evidence-based PBIS framework. In order to put the school-wide PBIS triangle back together, when we consider the needs of students with significant cognitive disabilities, and their historical exclusion from general education classrooms, we need to work backwards to ensure that students with significant cognitive disabilities first have access to tier one and then tiers two and three as appropriate. Students with significant cognitive disabilities who demonstrate challenging behavior should have access to tier one and two supports in addition to tier three support as illustrated by the image on the screen. In this image, the PBIS triangle is depicted in the form of three flat layers, representing the universal, targeted, and intensive tiers of PBIS. And it makes it more obvious that tier three supports are provided in conjunction with tier one and tier two supports. When students with significant cognitive disabilities are given full access to tiers one and two of PBIS, in addition to tier three supports, and are explicitly taught clear behavioral expectations, they may demonstrate improved behavioral outcomes when compared to other students who receive tier three interventions alone. 
they can also experience a deeper level of membership in school and classroom activities. Providing the most effective behavioral support for students with significant cognitive disabilities can sometimes be difficult. This makes it especially important to understand and use a wide variety of evidence-based practices. Re research has shown that students with significant cognitive disabilities who demonstrate challenging behavior can successfully participate in all three tiers of school-wide PBIS. Students who now successfully participate in all three tiers of PBIS often demonstrate increased pro-social behavior and decreased challenging behavior when compared to a time in which they received only tier three interventions. And generally, schools implementing school-wide PBIS with fidelity experience a reduction in the use of restraint and seclusion. This last item is especially important because research also tells us that students with significant cognitive disabilities are at higher risk for restraint and seclusion than their peers. A few years ago, my colleagues and I conducted a study in two school-wide positive behavior interventions and support schools. These schools were implementing strong tier one across school-wide settings and classrooms. Unfortunately, the special education self-contained classrooms were not given access to the tier one interventions. Because of this, we extended access to them by providing the same training and supports to see if it would affect behaviors of students with significant cognitive disabilities. We chose three target students across three self-contained classrooms to measure the effects of the intervention. Prior to the intervention, each student was only accessing tier three, individualized behavior interventions and supports. We asked special education teachers to implement the tier one intervention during whole group instruction, and all three teachers chose morning calendar. Johnny was one of our participants. He was a seven-year-old first grade student with an educational classification of autism. He attended the self-contained classroom for a majority of his school day. He had a history of interfering behaviors, which included getting out of his seat, orienting away from instruction, talking out, and or refusing to participate. In baseline, we observed Johnny during morning calendar for six consecutive days during those observations, Johnny engaged in interfering behaviors at a mean of 71% of intervals while receiving tier three intensive behavior support. He had a paraprofessional sitting next to him who provided individual supports, including physical and verbal redirections and reinforcing appropriate behavior using tokens, snacks, and break cards. During the intervention phase, his special education teacher implemented a tier one intervention using the school-wide and classroom expectations. With the introduction of this tier one support, Johnny engaged in challenging behaviors at a mean of 29% of intervals. Overall, Johnny demonstrated a 47% decrease of challenging behavior. By adding this tier one intervention, Johnny's teacher reported a more positive learning environment for all students, paraprofessionals and teachers. By the end, Johnny no longer required one-to-one -one paraprofessional support to participate in morning calendar. Students with significant cognitive disabilities can and should have access to all three tiers of school-wide PBIS. Here are a few action items for you to consider as you move forward in your work to include all students in PBIS. Share TIES resources on inclusive PBIS practices with your team. Request that PBIS trainers and centers include examples describing the inclusion of students with significant cognitive disabilities in all trainings. And ensure that your PBIS team has at least one member with experience with the student population. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to check out the other videos in the series. If you want to learn more, there's a link to the references cited in this presentation and information about the Thai Center in the video description.